In this video, we're going to start looking at what your DBSign instance is going to look like in a more real-world situation. So in this diagram, we've got our DBSign server and our host application and our database all within our network perimeter. And somewhere out on the edge of the network or in the DMZ, we would have some sort of proxy server, authentication server, a load balancer, something like that, uh, that's going to take the request from the users and retrieve those resources on the back side. That's what a reverse proxy is. It takes requests from a user and retrieves things on behalf of that user on servers on the other side of the proxy. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing first, is we're going to set up a reverse proxy on an Apache instance that funnels everything over to DBSign over in Tomcat. And then on that Apache server, we're going to set up uh, TLS authentication for the client. Typically, you know, in your everyday life, when you run into TLS um, or just encrypted web traffic, HTTPS, it's going to be one way. And your server over here is going to have a certificate and the client, your browser, will look at that certificate and decide if the website is who they say they are. And that's, that's one way authentication. Mutually authenticated TLS goes both ways. So not only does the server provide a certificate, but your browser also provides a certificate that says who you are to the server and the server validates it. And that's very important in the digital signature world for some of the applications that we're going to be using. So we're going to set up the proxy and then we're going to go set up TLS authentication and show how all that works in the DBSign world. The very first thing we want to do is set up our reverse proxy on our Apache instance so that our DBSign server can be accessible from the outside without having to open up ports for Tomcat. So what we have here is we have a default Apache server. Again, we're on CentOS 7 here. We have a default Apache server at, at this URL. And we have a DBSign server here on localhost 8080. Now, on this example, we have Apache and Tomcat with DBSign on the same computer. In your world, it's probably going to be separated out like we see in the diagram here. But for simplicity, we have it all on the same server here. But even if it's all still on the same server, we still only want to open up the HTTP ports uh, instead of having to open up special things for Tomcat as well. So this is still an important step, no matter if these two, uh, th these two instances of Apache and Tomcat are co-located or whether they're somewhere uh, apart on the network. And so what we want to do is we have this URI out here, slash dbsign server on Tomcat. And this is where dbsign is deployed. And we want to be able to do the same kind of thing here in Apache. And of course, if we go there now, we're going to get a not found because there's Apache doesn't know about this URI. There's no, there's no folders back there with these names or anything like that. And so we need to set up the reverse proxy to tell Apache when you see a slash DB sign URL come in, you need to go and grab those resources from somewhere else and pull them back for the client. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, in this version of Apache on CentOS, all of the configuration files that we're going to play with right now are in etsy httpd conf.d. And if we take a look in here, there's already some, uh, but I'm going to create a new one in here for our proxy examples. Now, this is going to be using mod proxy, and we're also going to be using an extension called mod proxy AJP, which we'll talk about a little bit as well and talk about the differences and why you may want to use one over the other. But right now I'm going to just set up a regular proxy pass to HTTP over port to port 8080 on Tomcat. So I'm going to create a new configuration file in here and we're just going to kind of go with the uh, with the uh, convention and we're going to call it proxy.conf. And Apache is set up so that any dot conf files you put in this directory, when it starts up, it's going to read them in and use them. So we don't have to do anything other than create our proxy.conf and start working on it. Now that may differ in your environment depending on how Apache is set up or how your 
uh, how your web server works. So th again, this is just an example. Now, the all the exact workings of mod proxy here for Apache are beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to give you examples here, and we're not necessarily going to talk about what each one of these things does, uh, but it's really simple, and you can set it up just exactly this way. So we're going to set up a proxy pass, and any time the server sees something coming for slash db sign, we're going to send it to localhost 8080 slash db sign. Uh, and we're going to do this over HTTP. We're going to do almost the same thing. We're going to set up a proxy pass reverse slash db sign HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 8080 slash db sign. And we're just going to save that and we will restart Apache. And hopefully we typed everything in right. Apache's gonna restart. Now we go back over here into our browser and our DB sign server is accessible through, uh, through Apache. And that's perfect. And let's take a look at this show stats page. Everything looks good in there. There's an extra option I'm going to put on here. I'm going to put an ampersand REQ on the show stats page. And this will show us uh, a little bit of information about the request that's coming into the DB sign server. And you'll scroll down and we'll see a new table down here at the bottom. Um, all kinds of stuff, the headers and various things. And what you'll see here is the remote address is 127.0.0.1. And if you remember, uh, when we set up privileged requests, when we were setting up our DB sign server, we said that show stats, for example, is a privileged request and it could only originate from localhost. And so this looks like it's coming from localhost on the loopback adapter. And the reason uh, that it does is because this request that, because we went through mod proxy HTTP, what the Apache server is doing is it's taking the request from the client, which is coming in on this URL, which actually is not the loopback address. If I ping uh, dbsinst demo dot gradcal internal.com, I see that it is listening on this address. So my client, when I come through, is actually coming through my network adapter and is coming from an address, a 192.168.1 address on my local network. But our DB sign server thinks we're coming from local host because the proxy server is taking that request and initiating a new HTTP request from the local host and sending it to, uh, to the back end to the Tomcat server. Now, that can cause a problem if we want to do privileged requests and our proxy server is on the same physical server as our, uh, as our Tomcat server because now what can happen is every request looks like it comes from local host. And that's bad if you don't want outside users to be able to do privileged requests. And so we need to think about what it is we're going to do here because we don't really want to leave it this way. So we have a couple of different options. The first option is your proxy server needs to come off of the same server and reside somewhere else so that we can fine tune these IP addresses and so that requests aren't all coming from local host. 
So we could do that, but we don't have the option to do that here. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. And I told you that we would be using mod proxy HTTP, uh, and we'd also look at mod proxy AJP. Now, AJP stands for the Apache JServe protocol, and it's a special optimized binary protocol between Apache and Tomcat that lets requests be proxied uh, in a super fast way, a super optimized way, and it's more transparent to the Tomcat server, uh, basically meaning that the request looks more like it came from the outside instead of through the Apache proxy server. So let's see what happens when we use uh, when we use AJP instead of HTTP. Whoop, I restarted uh, Apache. That's not what I meant to do. So I'm going to open up my proxy um, config file again, and we're going to make a super easy change. Instead of going over the HTTP protocol, we're going to go over AJP. And Tomcat is listening for AJP over port 8009 instead of 8080. So we're going to change all these to AJP, and we're going to change the port number. And let's restart Tomcat again. So I'm, I'm not going to do show stats yet. I'm just going to show you that this still works. We still can get to the DB sign landing page. And I'm going to open up the web developer tools here. Uh, to the network tab, and I'm going to show you something interesting. So now let's try to go to show stats. Well, we don't see anything here. Uh, this page is blank. And what we go down here and see is that we get a 403 request, not authorized. And that's because now the DB sign server, this request doesn't look like it's coming from localhost. It looks like it's coming from the external IP address because I'm using AJP. And so because show stats is a privileged request and it's only allowed on localhost, the server's now telling, sending me back a 403, you can't do this, you're not authorized to do that. So it's really as simple as that. We've got uh, the Apache proxy server set up. We've got it using mod proxy AJP so that the requests look the right way and they look like they're coming from the outside world instead of from localhost. And the next step we're going to do is we're going to configure uh, TLS in Apache, and then we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to enable... TLS authentication in Apache and enforce that on slash DB sign URIs. Now that we've got a reverse proxy set up, we want to take a look at properly configuring TLS here on our Apache instance on this server. And so up to this point, we've been doing everything over HTTP, but in the real world, we're going to want to do things over HTTPS so that things are more secure and communications are encrypted. Uh, this version, this particular installation of Apache does have TLS uh, enabled and configured out of the box, but if we try to go to our local site here in uh, in our browser, it's got a problem with it. And so if we investigate a little bit more, it's because the certificate is self-signed. And we could add an exception here to our browser and things would kind of work, but we really want this to work the right way. And so we want to get a certificate issued by um, some trusted authority. In this case, it's our internal PKI here, but it could be from Let's Encrypt or it could be from VeriSign or from your organization's PKI, just really doesn't matter, just as long as it's where it is that you normally get your TLS certificates from. And I've already done a little bit of legwork, and I've gotten my certificates uh, requested and issued. So I've got my certificate and my private key and the certificate chain for my server. And so we want to tell Apache to use these um, in, its, uh, in its configuration. If we take a look in our Apache configuration directory here, we'll already see an ssl.conf file. So let's, let's just take a look at that file. And this is the default one that comes installed and configured. You see there's just a lot of stuff in here and it's hard to read, it's hard to walk through. So we're gonna clean this out and we're gonna start with more of a bare bones 
kind of thing. But I want to, just for good measure, I want to get a backup of this file just so I don't shoot myself in the foot and mess something up. Now, I do already have a version of this file that I took and I cleaned it out. I took out all those comments. I took out some of the things that weren't completely necessary. So I'm going to copy that into here. And we'll take a look at it. And see what it looks like. And we'll see that uh, it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot easier to read, and it's a whole lot shorter. So what we want to do first is go down here and take a look at these three lines where we tell Apache where the certificate file is, where our private key is, and where our certificate chain file is. Uh, this is the actual server's TLS certificate, PIM encoded, and this will be its private key, which is also PIM encoded, and the certificate chain file is optional, but it helps clients uh, sometimes by sending the whole certificate chain down uh, in the request and the handshakes. And this, is, this file just contains the server's uh, chain all the way up to its trusted root. And so what we see here is just by default, it's using these that Apache makes when it installs just some local uh, local host and just a local host key and we want to get rid of these and use the real ones that we have from our PKI. So let's just change these three lines. Hopefully I copied the right thing. Yes. Server.pim and this is the private key, and then this is the certificate chain, server-chain.pim. Let me just make sure I have the right file names. Server, oh, server underscore chain, I gotta fix that. Server.key, server.pim. Server underscore chain, and let's just save that, and let's see if we've got everything right. We'll just restart Apache, and it restarted, so that's good. And let's refresh this page right here. Ah, and now we have a green key, and my connection's secure, and my certificate was issued by a trusted authority. Now, let's go back and take a look inside this SSL.conf for just a minute. And... All of these different lines and what they mean are just outside of the scope of what it is that we're doing here and what I want to explain. But I did want to go just through some best practices kind of thing. And you're going to want in your environment to be able to specify what protocols you're going to use and what cipher suites you're going to use and things like that. And you're going to have policies and guidelines in your environment to do that. But I did want to kind of show you something neat that we've used here internally. The Mozilla Foundation has this little utility page at ssl-conf or config.mozilla.org and it will help you come up with secure configurations for various types of uh, web servers and various versions of OpenSSL. So we're going to take a look at this one and maybe let it help us secure this even more. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it we're running Apache, and it's going to want to know the server version and the version of OpenSSL. So let's see what we've got on here for those. And we've got version 2.4.6 for Apache and 1.0.2. K for open SSL. You see all this down here changed. Now, there's some stuff in here I'm not really worried about, but what I do want to do is I'm going to take their recommendations for SSL protocol and let's 
Let's just comment out the default one. Let's stick that in there. And basically what this is saying is that this Apache server is now going to accept uh, all of its default protocols except for SSL version 3, TLS version 1, and TLS 1.1. So uh, effectively, this server is going to be doing TLS 1.2, and uh, if it supports it, maybe 1.3. I don't know if this particular version um, supports 1.3 or not. And we've got a Cypher Suite uh, list here, so let's take it. and let's put it in there. Now, this Cypher suite, this list, this list right here, is based on what is supported by um, this intermediate level of, of browsers. And so there's, there's certain things that we can do here. And what it says down here is this supports Firefox 27 and up, and these, these versions of these different browsers and software. So if we were to change it, uh, we would see that that cipher, this this list of ciphers change, uh, because there's things in here that older browsers wouldn't support, you know, old versions of Internet Explorer and things like that. So, but we're just going to leave it as it is, and it also has this right here, and I don't see that here in my config file, so I'm just going to paste it in. And there may be some other things in here that I'm interested in, but I'm not going to really worry about those right now. I just basically wanted to show you this little page and, and how it can help you narrow down some of the things that you want to do in your, in your file here. Let's just restart. And let's make sure that our DB sign server page is still working and going and perfect. Um, that's good. So we've got TLS configured properly here with this version of Apache. And what we're going to do next in the next section is we're going to set up this, this Apache server so that when we're going to DB sign related things, that it's going to enforce TLS mutual authentication. And we talked about that a little earlier here, where right now what we've got set up is the server will identify itself with the certificate. But what we also want to do for our purposes when we're signing documents is have the client also uh, force the client to authenticate itself with a certificate as well. So we're going to set that up in the next ver in the next section of the video. Now that we've got TLS configured properly in Apache, let's look at what we need to do to get this uh, client authentication step happening. So just like always, let's make a copy of our SSL.conf just in case we mess something up. We can always go back. And let's go take a look inside of here to see what we need to do. The first thing we got to think about when we're talking about client authentication with certificates is what certificates are we going to trust and how are we, how are we going to prompt the user on the client side. And so I've added in here with my server uh, certificate files, I've added a couple of new certs, uh, or not certificates, a couple of new files, one called cacerts.pym and the other one called cadinserts.pym. And let's just take a look, for example, what's inside the cacerts.pym file. And it's basically just a list of all of the intermediates and routes that we're going to trust for client authentication. Uh, here we're only doing the DB sign, uh, inter uh, the DB sign test PKI. So we only have two in here: the intermediate cert and the root cert. You may have many more certs than this in in your file. Um, and then we have the CA DN certs file and. What this file does is in the TLS spec, uh, it allows for optionally sending a list of certificate CA DNs down to the client during the handshake so that the client can narrow down the the certificate choices for the user. For example, your user may have 10 certificates imported into their browser, but you only trust 
maybe the CA for one of them. And so this is just a list of the CAs whose DN you want to send down to the client to help narrow down the certificate selection. So again, we've got these two new files, the CA PIM and the CA DN PIM file. So we need to tell our server to use those. And we're going to stay inside of our virtual host uh, tag here, and we're going to say SSL CA certificate file and SSLCA DN request file. And we're going to point at those two files that we have. CA underscore certs dot PIM CADN certs dot PIM. And now we need to tell the server what to do when we come to a DB sign location. So anytime somebody accesses the server and the URL starts with slash DB sign, we want to require client verification. So SSL verify, V-E-R-I-F-Y, client, and we're going to require that. And SSL verify depth. Uh, this just tells it how far up the certificate chain to go when it's verifying the client. I'm just putting 10 here. Our assert chains are only three deep, counting the end user certificate, so 10 is fine. Um, so we've set up our trust with these two, and then we've set up what to do for DB sign with this one. So let's save that. And if everything went well and we didn't misspell anything, we should be able to restart Apache. No error, so that's good. And let's see what happens when we go to the DB sign landing page here. Oh, we have a certificate prompt. And I have three certificates from our test PKI imported into here. So I'll just choose one. And we're up and we're good to go. So now uh, this server is set to require certificate when accessing DB sign. And I wanted to point out a couple of other little things just here in our config file. One of the things that we want to do is for the DB sign URLs, we want to disable keep alives as much as possible. Um, now, this can be overridden by proxy servers in between, so this, this isn't surefire. But what we want to try to do is we want to exercise the end user's private key every time the DB sign server is accessed. So we're going to do whatever we can do here on our end to make sure that that we don't have keep alives enabled. So here in Apache, so if my request URI looks like DB sign slash anything with DB, starts with DB sign, we're going to do no keep alive. Set env request. All right, so let's go back now and let's restart the server again. We're going to open up the web developer tools again and let's go to the network tab. And hopefully here now, when we go to the DB sign URL and server and we look at our response headers, it's going to say connection close and no cache. So every time we go here in this browser, it's going to attempt to create a new, uh, an, it's going to use the user's private key to create a new session. And so that's all we need to do for now to get mutual authentication happening between the client and server so that we can make sign request to the DB sign server. Uh, from an end user's machine and authenticate with their certificate.
Uh, just to kind of wrap things up here, we've got the server configured for TLS and to require a client certificate on, on the Apache level when a user browses to a DBSign URL. But I wanted to talk just briefly about how DBSign accesses the client certificate. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, previously in the video about the reverse proxy and the way it works. And we saw that we were using the AJP protocol here and not HTTP. And one of the reasons that that makes sense for us here and it, it works well is when we're using AJP, it's more transparent to the Tomcat server or from from the point of view of where the request is coming from. Uh, and the client certificate is available to Tomcat in a way that it looks like the authentication took place on the Tomcat server. And let me just kind of show you. I'm going to go to the uh, show stats page. And I'm going to add a ampersand request on the end here so that show stats will give us a little more information about the request that comes in. So if we go down here to the bottom, uh, we've got information about our request. And one of the things that we see now here is a request attribute called X509 certificate. And this is actually the certificate of the user that logged in. And from Tomcat's perspective and how DBSign will access the certificate, again, it makes it look like that the authentication happened directly by Tomcat, just the way that the AJP protocol works and the way that it presents the certificates to the user. Um, but we're not always using AJP or, or maybe even a plug-in, like there's one for WebLogic uh, for Apache that does the same thing, and it will more transparently pass these certificates along. But sometimes when we're coming through a proxy server, like an, like an F5 or something else, we don't have the certificate available to us in these attributes, so we have to get it from somewhere. And the way that we typically do that is through an HTTP header that's set on the proxy uh, that contains the user certificate. And so I'm going to show you here how to do that real quick uh, so that you'll see both ways, both from a, a request attribute standpoint, how to get the certificate or how DBSign gets the certificate, and then from a header. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go back in here to our SSL.conf file. And let's go back down to the bottom on our configuration. And basically what we want to do here in our location tag is set a request header. Uh, this does require mod headers, uh, but that's usually pretty stock for Apache. And we're going to set a header called SSL underscore client cert. And we're going to set it to this is a little bit of Apache magic here, uh, but when a client authenticates to the server with a certificate, uh, in the in the context of this request, there's a variable, an environment variable set called SSL client cert. Uh, now, this name and this name don't have to match, but it's it's pretty conventional that they do. Um, so what this is going to tell us to do is when we're at the DB sign header, we're also going to set a, or when we're at a DB sign location, we're going to make sure that we set a request header to SSL client cert. For, and that's going to contain the, uh, either the PIM encoded base64 cert or just a base64 encoded cert. Now, we want to keep people from spoofing that particular header. So we don't want people putting it, you know, we don't, we don't want an end user to put an SSL certificate header in their request before they send it and try to fool our server. So we want to make sure that we squash it on the server level. So we're going to uh, set up here, we're going to set a request header And we're just going to set it to nothing. So what this does is any request header named client cert, client SSL client cert that comes in from the client side, 
when they make this request, trying to spoof this and tell our DP sign server that there's somebody they're not, that gets squashed and it won't make it to the back end. So let's restart Apache here and let's reload this page. And now uh, what you see is we've got a header called SSL client cert and it contains my base64 encoded certificate. So you may have to do that in your environment if whatever proxy mechanism you're using does not pass the certificate uh, as a request attribute.